Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science and today I'm going to talk to you about replacing water in your formulations. Now as you may have seen in some other videos, I've shown you how to make some waterless products. So solid moisturising bars, solid shampoo, solid conditioner, face cleansers, there's those options. But what if you want to make a semi-solid or liquid product but you don't want to use a lot of water? How do you pick and choose between different water alternatives and what water alternatives are there? Well this video is going to go through a few of those options for you and I'm going to show you the pros and cons of using the different materials. First I want to show you these products here. These are put out by Vantage and they call them their milks. So there's an argan milk, there's a hair milk, there's a jojoba milk. And what these products are, they're oil and water emulsions prepared with ultrasonic cavitation in combination with a biomimetic phospholipid. So there's oils, there's phospholipids and there is some water present in here. Some of the advantages of these milks is they can be used 100% just as they come from the supplier that can be your product. You can add a few water soluble materials to it to make it more unique to your brand. And when you put them on the skin, because of the oils and phospholipids they contain, I've got to tell you, they feel absolutely divine. They feel beautiful just as they are. If you're adding them to a formula, if you're adding them to foaming products, you can add them about 1%, but in moisturizers or leave-on products, you can add them usually between 10 and 20%, and they add a beautiful skin feel to the product. They won't impact on your stability because they are a stable emulsion within themselves. And as you can see, they look rather milk-like, so they have a nice milky looking appearance. And of course, you can make treatment products with up to 100% of the material present. So there's some great ideas. They're not completely waterless, but they can replace some of the water in your formulations. Next, now these are some great water replacement alternatives. These are the Hydra Elixir products from Sepic. This is a fantastic innovation. Well done, Sepic. What they've done is they actually extract the water component from different types of seaweed. So you may not be aware, but most of the world, of course, is covered by an ocean. And seaweed grows quite prolifically in this ocean. It grows fast, it's very sustainable. And what SEPIC do is harvest some of this seaweed from very pristine locations, so very pure product. And then they gently heat the seaweed to extract the uh, moisture from within the seaweed and collect it, and here it is here. Um, what that means is there is no water in this bottle. It is all from the seaweed. They only use a very small amount of water in the production process to clean the vats and equipment used to extract the water from the seaweed. But it's a very, very sustainable way of replacing some or all of the water in your formulation. They don't have a very strong odor. They've only got a very slight uh, herby type aroma, so you could easily overcome any aroma from these materials using standard fragrances or essential oils. So these are an absolutely fantastic, true water replacement in your formula. Now there would be a little bit of electrolyte present in these materials. Um, so if you are formulating with these to replace your water, you would need to make sure you're using electrolyte tolerant materials or electrolyte resistant, but even tolerant would be fine. There's low levels of electrolytes, just be aware of that if you're formulating with them. They feel very much like water, they act very much like water, but totally from seaweed extraction. So again, it's a great way of reducing the amount of water used in a cosmetic. If you think about a standard moisturizer contains say 80% of water, the water to make that moisturizer would come from a larger quantity of water that goes through reverse osmosis. Up to about 1500 liters of water needs to go through reverse osmosis to get 1000 liters of purified water for cosmetic manufacture. You can replace it completely with these materials here. Uh, again, fully extracted from seaweed, only a very, very small amount of water used to clean the production equipment after the extraction process 
and you've got a great story to tell because of course they're seaweed waters and again very very sustainable source that those waters are coming from next we have uh, another interesting option I get asked about coconut water so again it's a, a water replacement now as you can see it's a little cloudy looking um, you'd need to check your suppliers um, ability to maintain ongoing quality control. You do need to preserve oil because it's a great nutrient source. It's also full of electrolytes. Now that could be beneficial in your finished product uh, for the skin, but it means that you also need to make sure you're using materials that aren't affected by electrolytes. So just bear that in mind, even more electrolytes in here, a lot of electrolytes in here compared to the Hydrolixes. So these are okay with electrolyte tolerant materials. This, if you're using this in a formula, you would need electrolyte resistant materials, materials that are not impacted by electrolytes at all. Otherwise, the presence of those electrolytes that naturally occur in coconut water that make it so nutrient rich uh, could impact the long-term stability of your formulation. So that's another option for you. Again, completely waterless. There is of course water used um, in the growing and harvesting of the coconuts uh, and if that's grown in a sustainable way then that water would also be part of the water cycle. Here is another option, um, this is an example of just one but there are many, hydrosols. Now your hydrosols are actually a byproduct when essential oils are made. Water vapor is collected during the steam distillation of essential oils, and this is the water vapor. Now what that means is the uh, hydrosol has a beautiful aroma reminiscent of the essential oil it's made from. So you can actually use this as your aromatic material in a product. You wouldn't need to add extra essential oils. It's completely water soluble. It can replace part or all of the water component of your formula. Uh, and it imparts that nice aroma. So I, I really love working with hydrosols. It means I don't need to worry about fragrance or essential oils in my formula because I get the fragrance from my hydrosol. And of course, all of these options do cost more than just using water. But if you're looking at water alternatives as part of your company philosophy and your product story, as long as you're prepared to wear that cost, it is obviously going to give consumers a water alternative or even water free option. Water is of course used to obtain the hydrosol, but if you think about the essential oils that are made, they're made whether we're gonna use the hydrosol or not. So it's a way of using a byproduct of a process that would be occurring to obtain the essential oil, and we're using the byproduct, so it's a way of also being very sustainable in the materials that we use in the industry. I also get asked about a couple of other materials as well. Milk would be one of the first things I get asked about. Can we use milk to replace water? Well, I wouldn't recommend you replace all of your water with milk. There's a few reasons for this. So of course there's goat's milk, camel's milk, uh, normal cow's milk. Um, one of the things with milk is it's very pH sensitive. It's also the proteins in the milk are sensitive to changes in pH, which can occur with cosmetics anyway over time, but they're also quite sensitive to heat. So if you're going to be using it as a water replacement, you need to try and avoid heat just to help make sure that you get good stability out of the product. You could use heat treated milk, of course that then won't be susceptible to heat changes. You could use reconstituted powdered milk uh, and again, that does tend to be a bit more stable against heat because of its processing in the first place. But all milks are very pH sensitive. So if you want to use milk in your formula, I first of all would not recommend be, it be a complete uh, water replacement. You might only want to add it up to 10%. It is a good natural source of lactic acid, which is beneficial for the skin. But then you will need to preserve your product well because it is very nutrient rich. And you also need to make sure you run good stability tests on your product because if that pH of the product starts to drift too far away from the pH of the milk, which is usually around 6.5,
If it starts to drift too far, either acidic or alkaline, you will get separation of the product quite rapidly and the product will not look good at all. So you could use it, I would say stick to 10% maximum, uh, but just be very, very careful about how that pH changes over time. All cosmetic products uh, where there is water present, the pH will move over time. It's how much it moves that matters to the product. And if milk is part of that product, you need to watch this very, very closely. Otherwise you could have big quality issues. Another one I get asked about a lot is fruit juice. Can I use fruit juice as part of my water content? And the thing you need to be aware of here is that fruit juice is actually quite high in fructose, which is sticky, it's sugar. So there could be some benefits from the fruit juice. Um, it could be hydrating for the skin, depending on which one you're using. Uh, but it's also a great nutrient source, which means it's also going to be quite prolific for microorganisms. So just make sure you are preserving your product extremely well. Think also about how you're packaging the product. Airless serum dispensers for the finished product would be good to help uh, reduce any contamination risk over time. You would definitely need to get your preservative efficacy testing done uh, and be very, very careful about that preservative selection. The other thing with juices is you do need to be careful about the pH. Again, your apple juice, your citrus juices, they're actually quite acidic. Um, their pH ranges can be as low as 3.5 to 4. So again, when you start to bring those pH up, to be more compatible with the skin, you can start to get color or odor changes to the juice because it's not maybe stable long-term at that higher pH. Watermelon juice um, is more water rich, less fructose, less sticky, but it still has fructose. Um, it has a more neutral pH, uh, but again, just be careful if you're using fruit juices because they are wonderful nutrient sources. Uh, again, if you limit them to about five or maybe 10% in your formula, make sure the product is preserved extremely well. Check it for skin fill because you could find it's, it's quite sticky. You might need to reduce that input even more. And of course, stability testing, very, very important to make sure that any pH changes over time don't cause a quality issue with your finished product. With fruit juices in particular, be very careful about color and aroma changes, especially over time. So the need to stability test if you're using your milk or fruit juices is incredibly important. Of course, you should be stability testing and preservative efficacy testing all of your formulas, but with those materials in particular, it's even more important because they are such nutrient rich sources and they are very, very sensitive to pH changes and their stability is affected by that. So there you go, you've got a range of water alternatives to choose from. I've got a little summary table for you so that you can see the pros and cons and just a reminder about the different materials I've presented to you today. I hope this gives you some great ideas to move forward with some water-free or partial water replacements in your products. Just take note of some of those special formulation considerations and quality checks you'll need to make when using these water alternatives. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below and make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. Happy formulating.